When someone goes to sell a house, the first thing they usually think about is hiring a real estate agent. But that can cost money, and sometimes lots of it. In this video, we're going to talk about what is a real estate commission, how much that commission is, and where that money actually goes. Hi, my name is Joel Y. I have been a real estate agent in the state of Kansas for the last 12 years, and that's where I get the knowledge and the expertise to teach you how to sell your house yourself and save thousands of dollars. This is not a, this is not a channel that people come back to again and again for entertainment. People come here once, maybe twice, when they're learning to sell their house themselves so they can save lots of money. So by subscribing to this channel and liking these videos, you can help people find the channel and they too can save thousands of dollars just like you're gonna do. So hit that subscribe button and like this video and you'll be helping out your fellow man. Nothing like some good karma. So what is a real estate commission? A real estate commission was what a real estate agent or brokerage gets paid for helping somebody sell a house. And that commission is, a, is usually a percentage of what the contract price is. And that, per, and that uh, commission is split between the buyer and the seller's agents. So it doesn't all go to the seller agent. Now we come to, we wonder who pays for all those commissions? Well, it's the seller that pays the real estate commissions. The seller pays for both the buyer and the seller. It's not gospel, but that's the way it is, pretty much because that's the way that it's always been done. And if we go back in time a little bit, we can find out why that is. So back in the day before the internet, you pretty much had to have a real estate agent or use a brokerage to sell a house. And if you wanted to buy a house, same thing. The only way you could really see what was available on the market is to hire a real estate agent. And you would go sit down at the office and they kept all the listings in these books. And you would sit down at a table and look through the books at listings. Or if you wanted to sell your house, you had to get your, your house in that book so that buyers could see it. But then came the internet. And once the internet came out, consumers had access to all that information. They didn't need a real estate brokerage to look at houses or to find out the history of houses or to find out how much a house costs. So while real estate, while the real estate industry used to hold all that information close at heart and then dole it out, and that's how they kept alive, once the internet came out, in order to retain relevancy, the real estate industry did a 180 and switched to a representation model. So now instead of being an information type business, they were a representation business where if you were selling your house, you had a seller's agent that represented you. If, you have a, if you're buying a house, you have a buyer's agent that represents you. And the seller pays for both those agents. Whether that makes sense or not, that's the way it's done. Because in the beginning, everybody worked for the seller and when they changed the representation model, it just never changed. And you know, in all my career, in the hundreds of transactions that I've done, I've never once had a seller ask me, why am I paying for the buyer's agent? Now, you have to understand that that seller is actually paying for an agent to negotiate against them. And you can look at that like, say you're in court, you're being sued or you're getting a divorce or something. You have an attorney and your adversary has an attorney, but you're paying for both attorneys. And that wouldn't make a bit of sense, would it? So that's what a real estate commission is. How much it is depends on whatever the seller and the agent decide on. Generally, you'll hear the you'll hear the word six percent being thrown around. Although it's illegal to set prices, it's usually around that. It can be anywhere from five to seven percent to get your house sold. Now that could be a lot of money if you're selling a half million dollar house. We'll do the math. So that'll take us down to like, where does all that money go? If it's so easy to sell a house now because all the information is free on the internet, where does all the money go, and why is it still so expensive? Well, first, I, I, I want to tell you, read this quote. The real estate industry is fragmented, inefficient, and it lacks any real transparency. Now let's break that statement down a little bit and that'll teach us kind of where all that money is going. First, the real estate industry is indeed fragmented. It used to be that there was a client and there was a real estate brokerage and the real estate brokerage and the client came together and they did business. But now with the, with the internet here, you have all kinds of people, so-called entrepreneurs and existing businesses that are inserting themselves in between the client and the real estate brokerage. Well, first we have associations. Now associations aren't anything new. They've always been around, but that's part of where your money goes. We pay dues at the national level, at the state level, and at the local level. 
Next are what I like to call Google Ad Interlopers. Now these are by far the slimiest of the slimy. What this is, is it's somebody that's really not in the real estate industry, but they, they start a business, give it a fancy name, they're really good at marketing, at internet marketing, internet marketing savvy people, and they market real estate services, even though they don't, they don't have anything to do with real estate. But when, when consumers go on and click on those buttons looking for real estate services, these, inter, these ad interlopers will sell your information to a real estate agent. So you never really know what kind of an agent you're getting, but whatever kind you're getting, it's costing that agent anywhere from 25 to 40% of the commission to buy your information from these marketers. And they serve absolutely no purpose whatsoever except for that. And then we have coaches. There's lots and lots of coaches and trainers in real estate and they all charge money. So what coaches and trainers are, are basically people that have sold real estate in the past, sold a few houses, and then decided they can make more money teaching other people to sell real estate. As to the inefficiency part of that statement, if you've ever bought or sold a house ever, then you understand how inefficient the process really is, how cumbersome it is, how convoluted it is, how long it takes, and how much money it costs. And then that brings us to the transparency issue or lack of transparency. JLL, which is a worldwide real estate service, a huge one, they have this to say about transparency. JLL defines a transparent real estate market as one in which stakeholders have ready access to high quality market data and performance benchmarks, where there is certainty, consistency, and where rigorously enforced rules and regulations exist. Corporate governance standards are found to be robust and real estate transactions are carried out fairly and ethically. So the transparency in real estate, there, there's several, uh, several examples of what is not transparent about real estate. First, we'll take multiple offers. If you've ever been in a situation where you put an offer on a house and then all, and the seller's agent told you like, well, we have multiple offers, so we're asking for the highest and the best. What they're doing is getting you to up your offer. They may actually have multiple offers and you may have to bid up to get it or they may not. The point is, is there is nothing that says that they have to prove that they have multiple offers. So you can just say it and, and you may end up paying $20,000 more for a house than you had originally offered simply because the seller's agent says that they have multiple offers. What they need is a system in place where they can prove somehow that they do have multiple offers. There's also lots of kickbacks in real estate that aren't transparent. You get kickbacks from warranty companies, you get kickbacks from, from other services, real estate service companies, and you get kickbacks from mortgage companies. If a mortgage company suggests me as a real estate agent to one of their clients, I have to pay that mortgage company for that client. So that's a kickback they're getting. Now those kickbacks are generally illegal, but they find loopholes and ways around them and they're just walking a thin line, staying on the right side of the law to be able to do that. And then there's the buyer's agency costs thing. Now buyer's agents aren't supposed to do this, but they often do. And that's where they tell a consumer, hey, hire me because I don't cost anything. I can help you find a house and it doesn't cost you a dime. When in fact it does because the seller is paying for that buyer's agent and the seller is gonna raise the price of the house to cover the cost of the commission, which then is passed on to the buyer. So yes, the buyer is paying for that real estate agent. And then there's loan costs. Now loan costs are a big one. The law says that, that loan companies have to disclose the loan costs, and which they do right before you close on the house. But during the beginning, when you first get your pre-approval, they're not required to tell you anything. In fact, I get people coming out all the time with a brand new shiny pre-approval letter from a loan company, and they have no idea that they have closing costs and prepaids to pay, which can be substantial. On a, on a $300,000 house, depending on the cost of the insurance and the taxes, that can run anywhere from seven to $12,000 in closing costs. And the consumer has no idea those are coming up until us as agents actually tell them. And the other thing is, is that once the, the consumer doesn't know exactly what those loan costs are gonna be until they're on down the road. And by that time, they may have already paid for an appraisal, paid for an inspection, and then right before they go to closing, they find, they figure, they find out exactly what those loan costs are gonna be. And by this, by this point, they really have no choice but to accept whatever they're told. So what does all that mean to you? Well, not much really, because you're here and you're gonna sell your house yourself and save thousands of dollars. And remember, subscribe so you can help other people find this channel too. And with that, 
I'm going to bid goodbye and thank you for watching. And remember, subscribe to this channel so you can help other people find it and they too can save thousands of dollars just like you. 